This is Lady G. Lady G. Welcome to another episode of Living the Vision with Lady G. I am Lady G. I'm your hostess with the mostest, and I'm so excited. We are on site, on location at Kingdom Festival Extravaganza with Bishop Rinson. He put on a wonderful, wonderful concert on tonight, event on tonight, production. You're going to hear from the Howard Gospel Choir. You're going to hear from the Williams Singers, Bishop Rinson himself. I can't wait for you to hear all that God has said said through our guests. Listen, people talked about when someone was on the verge of suicide. People talked about the death of children and how they still hold on to their faith, trust God, knowing that he will still bring about the vision in their life, regardless of trauma that they have experienced. And as you know, we always come back with our visionary moments, and then I'll be back with our brag on God this week. Don't you touch that dial. This show is powerful. <laughs> Brown, thank you so much for joining us on Living the Vision with Lady G. I know that you are the assistant choir director for Howard University Gospel Choir. Oh, you guys just lit the stage up, giving God the glory and honor and praise that he truly deserved. You guys gave him everything. Talk to my viewers about the gospel choir, who you guys are. Well, we are the Howard Gospel Choir of Howard University. We were founded on the campus um, in 1968. It was a vision of two ladies. They wanted to put together a choir, um, and they had a dream. She had a dream, um, came to campus, um, hooked up with her friend. She had the same vision. Long story short, we're here almost 50 years later, um, just singing God's praises. The vision is to minister the gospel of Jesus Christ to all people through music, and that's what we do. That's what we do. We give our heart, just like you said. Um, we put our, our soul out on that stage, and we just give it everything that we have. You absolutely do. I was truly blessed by the, the ministry, that the young people who are a part of it show that they're extremely blessed by the ministry, the people who receive. So you guys are here in um, Pennsylvania. You're on the Glorious God Tour. I know you're traveling all around the country. Tell us more about the Glorious God Tour, how it came about. Well, we, um, the choir hadn't recorded an album since, I want to say, 95. Okay. And so that was about almost over 20 years since the choir recorded. And so Reginald, the director, and I, we said, we got to capture the sound now. Mm -hmm. And so in 2014, um, at Crampton Auditorium on Howard's campus, um, we recorded a live project. Uh, we wrote a few songs, solicited um, some other writers. And we just, we said, we got to capture this, capture the sound now. Right. And now we're just promoting it, going every place, telling, telling people about the gloriousness, if that's a word, <laughs> um, of our God. He's so good. And Amen. that's spreading the good news. That's a, that's a true story. You spread the good news in a very energetic way. Yes, yes, yes. We believe, I believe in giving, giving your all. You know what I'm saying? It's, you never know when it's going to be your last opportunity. Um, and you never know who is in the audience, what the need is in the room. Mm -hmm. And so we teach the choir that we have to be very sensitive mm -hmm. um, and really uh, allow the Holy Spirit to lead us and to really, you know, part our hearts because you just never know what the need is right. in the room. And we want to be so sensitive that we, you know, we minister directly to what people are going through. Bless the Lord. That is so true because the way that you guys just really gave, truly, it's not you're just saying we're giving our all. We experienced you guys giving your all on this glorious God tour. So I know the choir is made up of various members. How do people become a part of the choir or hear about the choir or I hear that number of them stay with the choir? Mm -hmm. Well, we have auditions twice a year. Uh, we have them in the fall semester and then we have them again um, in January for the spring semester. Um, and they just come, you audition. Um, we sit before our section leaders and um, the business staff, our whole executive board, and you audition and you know, we let the Lord speak to us too about who to who to let in, but it's it's really simple. Uh, most people think you have to go to Howard to be a part. It's right. not true. Okay. Um, so it's really um, a community choir, okay. um, and so it's made up of uh, not just music majors. We have psychology majors, lawyers. You know, 
all all across. Um, and we just, you know, we come together. That's what's so special about it. Everybody's not, don't want to be a singer. Mm -hmm. Everyone doesn't want to be in music business, but we have um, various majors. But when we come together, we come together for that purpose, which is to lift up the name of Jesus. Amen, amen. So I know the tour is called Glorious God. Is the project that you guys released in 2016, is that the name of the project? That is, that's the title track, um, Glorious God, was written by Reginald Golden. Um, and it's an awesome song. It's an awesome, awesome song. It was on the radio. Um, we received um, two stellar, some stellar nominations Beautiful. from it. And so this was our first year going to the Stellar Awards yeah. back in March. And so that was that was everything. That oh, was everything. big congrats on that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. To God be the glory. So why don't you tell us about? You said you wanted to capture the sound, the sound that you were having in the choir. It's the glorious God sound. Tell us about that particular sound that people can hear on your CD. Well, we try to make it our business to you know be versatile in our presentation, and so we have some contemporary music on there. Okay. We have some traditional, we have some spirituals. Um, we have it all. We have some inspirational music as well because we want to reach, a, we have a broad audience mm -hmm. um, that the Lord has called us to. And so we want to make sure we have, you know, just something for everybody. Mm -hmm. So it's a fresh sound. Mm -hmm. um, it's new, it's vibrant, it's energetic, mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's also mature. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's all for the glory of God. Amen. So before we go, because I know you guys have to get back on the road, travel down to um, to D.C., tell our viewers um, if they want to experience the sound yeah. <laughs> that is glorious God, how can they contact you guys and maybe bring you to their church so that you can minister and lift the people of God up? Definitely. You can go to our website um, at HowardGospelChoir.com. Um, Glorious God is available on all digital music outlets, Apple Music, Google Play, um, Amazon, Spotify, everything. We're on Facebook, Facebook.com slash HowardGospelChoir, YouTube.com slash HowardGospelChoir, Twitter um, slash HGC1968. We're on Instagram, Instagram.com slash HowardGospelChoir. And if you just want some information, you can email us at info at HowardGospelChoir.com. I think you told the people. <laughs> yes. Well, you know what? We really just was blessed by glorious God, by the gift um, that you young people have given back unto God that is blessing his people. Truly, truly, truly enjoyed you on this evening. So we just want to say continue to live out God's vision for your life and your people. And thank you so much for joining us on Living the Vision with Lady yeah. T. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Listen, don't you touch that dial. We'll be right back. We have a lot more show in store for you. Hi, welcome back. You're watching Living the Vision with Lady G. That's who I be. I'm your hostess with the most is. And I'm so excited. We have the Williams Singers. I know many of you have heard a number of their music, and I'm just so excited that they are here with us to talk to us about their new project. It's called In Real Time. It's live to DVD. A whole, whole DVD of all of the great sounds that we're used to hearing from the Williams Singers. So welcome, gentlemen, to Living the Vision. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Absolutely. So could you just go around real quickly and introduce yourself to our viewers? Sure. I'm Desmond Williams. I'm Darnell Williams. And I'm Desiree Williams. Very nice to meet you, Williams brothers. So I just heard part of your project in real time. You were telling me that it's on DVD. People can pick it up from Walmart and other distribution places. Talk to us about the DVD. Um, the DVD is basically a uh, compilation of songs that we've uh, uh, recorded down through the years. Um, we uh, had recorded six albums uh, before that, and then we decided that uh, it would be a very good idea for us to do just a big live experience, you know, and so we ended up calling it uh, the Williams Singers in real time, right. you know, and so uh, it, it turned out to be very, very great, and uh, we've gotten a lot of great reviews about it, and so we're really excited. So where are some of the places that people can pick up the DVD? Uh, you can go to Oh, well, all the digital downloads, Google Play, iTunes, uh, Walmarts, Best Buys, uh, Targets, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. your Targets. Everywhere you can pick up digital music, you also can pick up the DVD, which I'm sure really bless you guys. I was talking to one of the brothers. I like live to DVD. <laughs> Some of them over here like studio. We're not going to call them out. <laughs> 
So what made you guys decide to do live to DVD? I know you said it's a combination of all of your greatest hits and some of the songs over the years, but what made you decide, like, let, I want this sound to be on a DVD versus going straight to the studio and um, recording? Well, we had, um, you know, been doing some things with, with quartet music. That's been our major sound. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just really wanted to share it with the world. Um, you know, we got the chance, we got the chance to, you know, share this sound with um, different, um, you know, I mean, as we go and travel and, and perform. Mm -hmm. uh, but we really wanted to bring it to the world. Mm -hmm. You know, and so far it's, 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 been, it's been accepted very, very well. You know, so we're really excited about it, yeah. Great. I know it's being well received. I was here and the the audience uh, went off when you guys started singing some of your, your popular songs um, that you're very well known for, but also was just jamming to the, the re-sound of the quartet mm -hmm. because um, all of us may not personally like quartet, <laughs> but the re I can get with. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely, absolutely. And we, we love when people say, I don't like quartet, but right. that, 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 that's our goal, you know. And so, um, you know, we're, we're not calling ourselves the saviors of quartet, but we're proud to be uh, quartet singers, but we are very much so proud to do it the way God has allowed us to do it, Amen. you know. Now, I know that you guys wrote all of the songs on the project. You want to talk to us about the, the vision, what you put into it, what God gave you for this particular project? Uh, yes, well, ultimately, it's just a collection of our experiences and what we've been through. So we decided to just come together and put it all together in one. And, and it was a lot of uh, struggles, mm -hmm. a lot of things that we had to go through just to get to that point, and a lot of uh, arguing and all kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, at the end of the day, um, we know what God has for us. We know the vision that God has you know, allowed us to share with the world. And I like that. So, gentlemen, I was talking to you all about the, the, the vision of the show, Living the Vision with Lady G. Mm -hmm. And I know you let, let us right into about experiences. People are experiencing just different things throughout their lives, but especially when they have decided to submit to the call and to will of God in their life. Talk to us about some of the challenges you had to face, not only as a group, but possibly individually, when you told God yes to his vision for your life, which necessarily may not have looked the way that you thought it would look. Who would like to share with us? Uh, yes, you're the closest, <laughs> you talk to me. Okay, well, I mean, uh, we've we've uh, come a long way. We've, we all have different experiences. Um, um, we don't share a whole lot about the depth of what what we went through, but I can tell you, um, me and my twin here, we were we were like street boys. Mm -hmm. We came we came up from you know from the church. Our dad was a, a pastor. You know, my mom, she was always she always raised us up in the church. But when we got older, we wanted to hit the streets. Mm -hmm. You know. And uh, we wanted that fast money like a lot of these young people now do. They see TV and they see all the glam and and that's what they want, you know. So we had a little bit of that and trying to um, uh, trying to fight with that uh, spirit of uh, basically living a life of how can I get rich quick, mm -hmm. you know, instead of um, – living out God's plan. And the funny thing is, it, it doesn't matter how deep you go. You know, it does not matter. And this is what I'll tell anybody. It does not matter how deep you go, how far you go, whatever you're doing out there, God is always going to find you wherever you are. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people get kind of, um, They'll get it twisted. They they'll think that well, you know, I've I've did this and I've did that and I can't come, you know. But the 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 thing about it is, is we have to realize what God God's love is. Mm -hmm. I mean, we me and my brother, my brother never did experience the street life, you know, because he was doing choirs and stuff like that. He was a he's a, a John P. Key is like one of his mentors. He loved John. But me and my brother, we ventured off and we got in the streets. And we done a lot. I mean, we was hustling. We was, you know, we was, as they call it, grinding. And 
And we didn't see, we had got so far until we could not really see how far we got out there, gotcha. you know, until one day my brother was, all, and we always knew about God, mm -hmm. we always knew about God until one day my brother said, hey man, uh, let's get together and let's uh, do a tribute to our father. Okay. Let's do a tribute to our father. And our father was a diehard quartet. And as we got together and we started doing, um, you know, doing our uh, thing with our um, solo songs and stuff like that. Yeah. The first project, actually. It was, uh, the first project was called A Tribute to Dad. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was just a, a collection of, uh, mainly a collection of songs that he had written for us when we were younger. Okay. You know, and, um, uh, and then, you know, then, of course, you know, a dab or two of songs that we had written. We, we e eventually ended up uh, coming together and we gelled together and we we got this connection that it seemed like that we had lost from uh, way back when we was young and, and it kind of sparked something in us to say hey look even though me and my brother was still kind of you know it sparked this this fire in us to say wait a minute this is your purpose mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean I was used to making some nice money you know but our money ain't good money we a lot of people know that our money we was you know what it did for us it it actually changed our life because so many people were touched by the music that we were doing and the sound that we were encouraged to go with our first love there was a guy and i think that um uh, he was on the verge of committing suicide. I, I don't know who he called. It was it, it, one of my brothers or, uh, and the guy said, hey, look, I'm, I'm on the verge of committing suicide. He was in the car mm -hmm. and he was getting ready to blow his brains out in the car. And uh, uh, as he began to talk, uh, uh, he said, I'm going to put in this last song and then I'm going to blow my brains out. And uh, the song was called Make Me Away which which we did on our first project uh, uh tribute to dad which is actually on this latest project mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, yeah and and the guy ended up uh, uh he hung up the phone we didn't know what was happening to him we didn't know what happened we was just so so you know discouraged and like oh my god this guy and he ended up calling back a week and said that song saved his life said because he as he began to try to pull the trigger that song kept ministering to him and ministering to him until he couldn't pull the trigger anymore he put the he put the uh gun down and listened to the words make me away and that one thing changed my life mm -hmm. to let us know that the music that we do have been ordained not only ordained but it, it has been chosen for a generation of people that that's been where we've been mm -hmm. i'm talking about thoughts of suicide thoughts of uh, uh all kind of uh different levels that we've been in been on fighting these you know and and we're here to tell everybody that we've lived the uh, the life we can't say anything unless we've lived it mm -hmm. and we've lived a life that the these people out here are living we want to show people by our music hey look you can you can survive. You can survive. So, Amen. Amen. And before we close out, I want you to speak to our viewers. I heard your brother's testimony. I spoke to your older brother about his. Talk to us about the turning point or just if someone is on that brink or discouraged as they're living out God's vision for their life. Can you just leave our viewers with some encouraging words so that they won't give up or if someone is out there and feeling hopeless, like, God, I know you called me to do this, but I don't see you. Yes, uh, I will say that, um, first of all, some of the turning points that happened to me and in our lives was where God did some amazing things turn around. And I will say in the midst of problems and trials, God will always bring you up. Um, I lost my son. He was 19 years old, uh, 18 years old, and he drowned. And um, he was in a car and uh, with, his, with his girlfriend, the car rolled back. And uh, he didn't make it. He couldn't swim. He drowned. This was last year, the uh, year before last. Some things that would just happen that you would think that it was okay, 
this is really trying my faith. It's time for me to just quit. And sometimes you go through those things. And my brothers have been through so much together, but we understand that God has still something for us. Every last one of us are ministers. We all preach. Um, and I just think that God, he, he did that for a reason, to save our lives. And he did it for us to be a testimony to somebody else. Because if we give up, there's so many people that won't have hope. Okay. So um, ultimately, I believe that our journey here on earth, I believe that our journey here in life is for us to be an example to somebody else. Mm -hmm. To tell somebody, hey, check this out. You're not going to be 100 all the time. You're going to fall. You, <laughs> you're going to make some mistakes. But it's okay to make the mistakes as long as you know how to get back up and keep going. We wanted to, to, to stop and quit so many times. The enemy has tried to destroy us by this and that. As a matter of fact, me and my brothers go through so much. I mean, when it comes to the industry, how we're treated, how people look at us. But God is still saying, I chose you. So I think that's enough right there to tell somebody that it does not matter what you're going through. As long as you're willing to stay faithful and keep going, God can do anything. And we believe that we're going to go somewhere that the, that the world has not seen. Eyes have not seen nor ears have heard the things that God has for you. And that can be your same testimony. I'm here to tell you that you can make it. You can you can survive. You can you can be more than what you think you are. Don't think that you're nothing. Even when the enemy tells you you're nothing, you can do it. We sing, we preach and we live this life. You got to have faith. It's all about God. That's my that's our testimony. Wow, such a powerful testimony, gentlemen, and that to see that the ministry and how you're still giving God the glory in the midst of your untold story, um, but people can hear God's faithfulness to you when you give him glory in his song. So I just want to thank you so much for joining us on Living the Vision with Lady G. They dropped some bombs, y'all. <laughs> Listen, I'm sure that you, listen, if your faith was low after hearing this, I know it is high. Thank you again so much for joining us on Living the Vision with Lady G. We greatly appreciate it. Our pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Listen, guys, don't you touch that dial. We'll be right back. Hey, what's up? I am Todd Delaney. This is Pastor Mark Collier. What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Jermaine Dolly, Mr. Hello Dolly himself. I am Real Talk Kim. Hi, I'm Miranda Willis, and you're watching Living the Vision with Lady G. My girl, Lady G. Lady G. Lady G. Lady G. You're living the vision with my homegirl, Lady G. Hi, this is Pastor Key, and I was lost until I started watching Living the Vision with the one and only Lady G. As you know, we are at Kingdom Fest Extravaganza. The visionary is Bishop Remsen, and we have him here right now. Bishop, oh, thank man. you for joining us on Living the Vision. Oh, man, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. This is a pleasure and a privilege. Bishop, so I just had a wonderful time at this event. Can you tell our viewers what is about Kingdom Fest Extravaganza, what it was about, the vision behind it, and the artists and how you chose to have them share their gifts with the world? Well, um, you know, this was just something we decided to do for 2017. This is something that's not new to me. I've had so many great artists, uh, James Hall and uh, Karen Clark, Dorinda was just with us and maybe a couple weeks ago. So I wanted to put something together to kind of bring a uh, conglomeration of talent uh, together. And it just happened to be this year we were able to get the Howard Gospel Choir and as well as the Williams Singers. I wanted to introduce these fine young men, this fine talent to the city of Philadelphia. And of course, that is our kind of our goal. Our vision is to use this platform to kind of introduce uh, the city of Philadelphia to outside talent, new talent. Well, Bishop, everyone who was in attendance, we can see that they thoroughly enjoyed themselves at Kingdom Fest Extravaganza. Thank you so much for just having the vision and then going about and doing what you need to do to put into action because everyone that was there were truly blessed. So I want you, if you could, just, you know, the show is called Living a Vision with okay. Lady G. Right. And you are a great visionary man. So can you tell our viewers about your ministry and the vision that God has given you for it? 
Sure. Well, let me first thank you for coming and wanting to be a part and to interview us on your tremendous program. Uh, basically, I am pastor number four. I am a part of a historic ministry uh, that started in 1933 under the late Bishop Bruce Madison Oakley. And then it transferred over after the death of Bishop Oakley to my grandmother, Mother Irene Oakley, and then to my mother-in-law, Evangelist Maria Gardner, Pastor Maria Gardner, uh, who now is married. Married, and of course she's in San Francisco, California with the stars and her husband. So um, of course I was blessed. She turned the church over to me. And so I won't, you know, I'm taking the ministry to kingdom levels and kingdom dominion, uh, dimensions and, and we're doing some new things. Of course, we were on 7th and Oxford in, in North Philly, as you know, for 54 years, I believe they were on that corner. And so I just decided, you know, new vision, shifting, fresh start, because the kingdom of God, I believe in this season is doing tremendous shiftings. On this show, we want to just encourage God's people so many people, you know, they, they come to church um, just out of, I guess, religion or something to do. Um, but they, they leave so hopeless, even though the word is being preached or, you know, if faith is being instilled in them, but people still go back Monday through Saturday, depressed or discouraged. It's like, God, when are you going to do it for me? Could you just leave just a couple of nuggets or words of encouragement? This is a season where literally you have to trust God. You have to be a faith believer. You have to walk by faith. Uh, I've been preaching for, uh, about the past two months or so and trying to get people to understand who they really are um, in the kingdom. Um, if I, you know, if the truth be told, we're really being bogged down, especially in church, we're being bogged down with a lot of tradition and a lot of nonsense and a lot of judgmental spirits, uh, you know, and, and people really nowadays just want to come somewhere that they can get some hope and some, some life, amen, and to know that they, you know, they can make it. And so really what I tell you is just trust God, believe God. I encourage you, keep coming to church. Church. Keep praising God. Keep blessing God. Keep building your relationship with God. Don't look at what's happening on the outside, uh, but stay true to God and God will stay true to you. And in the days to come, God is going to show up as God. Amen. Well, listen, if you were discouraged before then, <laughs> Bishop then brought you up. <laughs> Real quickly before we go, I know you have a lot of exciting things going on here at the ministry, especially at your new location. If people want to find out about what's happening, how can they find out all that's going on? You can catch us on our websites, www.kdcination.com, or you can catch me on my personal website, Derek A. Remsen Ministries.com. And of course, we're on Facebook, Instagram, we're on Twitter. Don't you touch that dial. You're watching Living the Vision with Lady G. Hey, this is Pastor Danny Sutton, and this is your visionary moment. I'm reminded of the story of Joseph, very familiar man of God. Often we refer to him in scripture. He's one who can encourage us and give us some great tools for living. One of the things that I love about his life is what happened to him in the middle while he was on his way to the palace for which he was promised. He was thrown in the prison and being thrown in the prison, he was surrounded around two gentlemen, a baker and a butler, and both of them had dreams. Here's what their issue was. They had a dream, but they could not interpret what they had seen. And many people, that is what they deal with often on a day-to-day -day basis. They have dreams that they long for, but they cannot interpret them, which makes the dream a nightmare. What I will challenge you to do is pray that the Lord would give you interpretation, that you would be able to understand the visions that God shows you. Seeing a vision is one thing, but having understanding about that vision is totally altogether different. Don't just have a dream. You need an interpretation for the dream so that you can know how to fully execute whatever it is that you've seen. For the Bible does declare where there is no vision, the people perish. But at the same time, if I don't have an interpretation about that vision, I perish along with it. I pray that you hold on to this word and you get the interpretation about whatever God has shown you. Then and only then can you fulfill the promise of God. This is Pastor Danny Sutton and this has been your visionary moment. I told you that was a powerful, powerful show about when people share testimonies and what they're going through, but they are still giving God 
all of the glory, honor, and praise that he is due. I want to share with you a brag on God that we had coming from one of our viewers. They were telling us that they worked for a company, and they haven't been with the company for a little over two years. And don't you know they received unexpected money? A nice royalty check came in the mail. They weren't expecting it. They thought everything was done with the company. And here it is, two years out of the blue, they received a large royalty check. Let me tell you something. Your name is in the wind. Okay, and there's money attached to it. <laughs> that is our brag on God this week. Remember, we are here for you to help you live out God's vision for your life, to give you the wisdom, knowledge, the tools, the encouragement, the inspiration that you need so that you too will be living on the other side of victory and submitted to God's will for your life. Until next week, I am sending you love, giggles, and I just pray that God's richest blessings are upon you. Until next week, have an awesome, awesome week.